And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. Is there anything better than love? We want to love, but we find it difficult to love. Why? Because there are many reasons not to love. Isn't it easier to find reasons not to love than to love? Different thoughts, different personalities, different likings, different races, different ideologies, and so on. There is hatred between South and North, East and West, adult generation and next generation, even hatred between men and women. In postmodern times, egocentric inclination only intensifies, and people find it hard not to discriminate. We talk about equality, but we want to be equal with those who are higher and mightier than we are, not with those who are weaker or lower. In today's text, one person comes to test Jesus. He is the teacher of the law. His title is equivalent to a Ph.D. in today's terms. How does he test Jesus? Can we read Luke 10, 25? And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The teacher of the law is testing Jesus by asking Jesus, How can I receive eternal life? It appears a simple question, but in the question is his self-confidence. He is confident to argue with Jesus. So he throws upon Jesus a question. To his question, Jesus asked him back, how he reads the law. The teacher of the law replies, Love your God and love your neighbor. But on, the teacher of the law thought to himself. Thus he expected praise from Jesus and the followers of Jesus. Against his expectation, Jesus' answer surprises him. Let's read 1028. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. What did Jesus mean to say? Do what you just said, and you will live. The teacher of the law couldn't care less and wants to move on, but maybe he found the way Jesus addresses his question hurting his ego because Jesus is challenging him to love in order to live. Feeling irritated, the teacher of the law is now retorting Jesus again. Who is my neighbor? His point of argument with Jesus is this. Yes, I love God with all my heart and soul, so I have no problem. But as for the neighbor, I find very few worthy to be loved by me. You and I could have a similar valid reason why we cannot love our neighbor, why they cannot become my friend. Plenty of other reasons, such as personality, fashion, style, mental health, attitude, and so forth. We claim that there are very few who deserve my favor. Look at the teacher of the law and his attitude. He sees no problem in himself. The problem is in others. He is quick to see the speck in others' eyes, but not the plank in his own eyes. Against this backdrop, Jesus is now telling us a parable of a good Samaritan. In this parable, there are three kinds of people appearing. The first are robbers whose lifestyle we all reject. 
The second are a priest and a Levite, who are useless in this situation. And the third is a Samaritan, who does something beyond what we would expect him to do. He is the one we may expect to pass by the poor fellow. The story starts with a Jew traveling, traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is located in highland, while Jericho is in lowland and far below sea level. It was a 16-mile long and winding distance running the high risk of robbery. Therefore, a person shouldn't have traveled alone. The text is not clear why the person traveled alone, but the person was not wise in his act of traveling alone. The traveler was robbed, stripped of his clothes, beaten to half dead. Now a priest and a Levite come and pass by. Luke 10.31 says, Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. A priest and a Levite came and saw, but ran away. Why didn't they help? It is possible that they saw him dead. It is possible that they did not want to touch the dead body in violation of the law before serving the Lord at the holy temple. It is possible they put on clean gowns, wanted to serve God wholeheartedly at the temple, but the fact of the matter is that neither of them had love for this neighbor of theirs. They may have excused themselves for a good plausible reason, but the priest and both the priest and the Levite were faithful, blameless, perhaps near perfect in fulfilling their duty. However, they did not have mercy. As for me, I also confess that I encounter a similar challenge. When I become too focused on completing a task, I unintentionally hurt someone and say words regretted later on. So I try to live by the principle that when there arises a divergent opinion in our leadership meeting, I stop it. Doing nothing is better than trying to do something in disunity. The priest and Levite could have possibly prayed for the half-dead person like this, God, I am too busy with an important duty of serving you at the temple, so I am passing by. Please have mercy on him. God would have replied like this, Why can't you do it yourself? There are many intelligent people around us. I am sure you know someone around you is really good and smart. I met a brother, a Harvard graduate, a Ph.D., who was a really humble man. He acted like a student, warmly serving others. A rare person is both smart and humble. We can see many smart people around us, but few are smart, humble, and merciful. Our God is searching for people whose hearts are humble, merciful, and loving. The Lord says in the book of the prophet Micah 3, 4, Then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time, because they have made their deeds evil. Why does the Lord hide his face from them? It was because of their evil deeds, mercilessness, and cold hearts toward their neighbors. God does not answer their prayer. God hides his face. The Samaritans are the people of northern Israel who were conquered by the Assyrian Empire. Assyria aimed to destroy the identity of Israel, so it had a policy of mixing the northern Israel people with other ethnic groups, which Judah of southern Israel looked down on and despised severely. As a result, they hated each other. But this Samaritan man had mercy on the Jew, bound his wounds, poured on oil on him, took him to an inn, and took care of him. He paid for the bill and promised to pay more if necessary on the way back. When the Samaritan knew the person he was taking care of was a Jew, how would he have felt? He might have felt hesitant, but this Samaritan man broke down the barrier. He was a man of love and mercy. He took the price out of love. Having finished the parable, now Jesus is asking back to the teacher of the law in verse 36, Who do you think is your neighbor? To the question, the teacher of the law does not name the Samaritan who he hates. Instead, he answers, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Jesus is telling the teacher of the law, the enemy in need of your help is your neighbor, not just the lovable ones you would like to love. Dear saints, everyone can love people who are lovely, such as famous dancing groups or movie stars, but not everyone is lovely. What does Jesus tell us? 
Jesus asks us to become friends and neighbors to people who are not lovable, as a Samaritan did to his enemy Jew. Dear saints, Jesus' whole life was lived like that of the Samaritan. Jesus crossed the boundary to come to us who were robbed, stripped off, beaten to half dead by evil powers. Jesus came as a good neighbor to us, not because we are worthy or lovable. The parable about a good Samaritan is the story of Jesus. He took the price. He paid our debts. He loved us while we were sinners, and he died for us. Only when we realize the love of Jesus can we love people in need, even enemies. Only when we realize that we are beneficiaries of his love can we be the same neighbor to those in need, as a Samaritan did to the Jew, as Jesus did to us. Dear saints, I would like to invite you all to bow and close your eyes. Take a moment to reflect on the words given us this morning. We cannot love everyone. The Lord is not asking us to love everyone we come across, but we can give to, other, we can give to others rather than take from them, like robbers. I can take care of one right before me, not running away as the priest and Levite did. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to discern who that person is, what that person's needs are, how I can become a neighbor to that person. Do you know the symptom of the end times is? Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12, the love of many will grow cold. Jesus said to the teacher of the law, do this and you will live. You go and do the likewise. The same Jesus is inviting us to do the likewise. Then we will live. Let's pray in silence for a couple of minutes before I close. Heavenly Father, we are living in a world of end times. Our hearts grow cold and we find it hard to love our neighbors. Let's not forget Jesus, who loved us while we were sinners and died for us. Let us not forget the price that Jesus paid on the cross. Empower us to do the same as a Samaritan did in the parable, who crossed the boundary, not by the power of our flesh and will, but by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.